The mission of the Cuyahoga Soil and Water Conservation District is to implement programs and practices that protect and restore healthy soil and water resources. You can find more information on our website at CuyahogaSWCD.org. Soil and Water Conservation Districts were formed out of the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. There are 88 counties in the state of Ohio, and there are 88 Soil and Water Conservation Districts. And there should be one in every county of the United States. In Cleveland, our Cuyahoga River caught fire 13 times over about a 100-year period. But actually, something good did come out of it. In 1969, the Cuyahoga River burned for the last time. It was quite a small fire in comparison to some of the other ones, and it did put us in international fame because of an article in Time Magazine in August of 1969. However, it was the impetus for the passage of the Clean Water Act. The Clean Water Act passed in 1972 started permitting what's called point source pollution, meaning industries and factories that had a waste pipe that were allowed to dump right into the rivers and creeks and streams now had to do something else with that, that waste product. Now that was great and all, but over about a 10 year period, people out testing the waters realized that the waterways weren't cleaning up as much as they thought that they would. So they realized they now need to control what's called non-point source pollution or stormwater. We sometimes refer to this as death by a thousand cuts. It's a cumulative effect of all of the things that run off of the land when it rains or snow melts. There are a variety of stormwater pollutants that can be more harmful than any industry or factory pollution could ever be. Fertilizers and pesticides, oil and gas from leaking cars, car washing, road salt, pet waste, litter, the list goes on. It all adds up. All of this goes into our waterways completely untreated, again, when it rains or snow melts. Our rooftops, lawns, and driveways are directly connected to local creeks and streams and ultimately into Lake Erie. So whatever comes off of your property and makes its way down that storm drain is affecting the waterways, even if you're not close to them. One thing you can do to help out is to clean out that storm drain that's outside of your house. Sure, your community comes by occasionally and, and sweeps the streets, but they can't be out there all the time. So to help with flooding and help with debris going into our waterways, Grab a broom and go outside and clean off your storm drain, but please do it safely. Another thing you can do is to install a rain barrel, or two, or three. Now rain barrels are nothing new, they've been around for hundreds of years. We've just seen a resurgence in their popularity in the last few years in our society. Now I mentioned the word watershed. A watershed is an area of land that drains a certain body of water. In the state of Ohio, we have two distinct watersheds. The top part drains out to Lake Erie, and the bottom part drains out to the Ohio River. You can find out what watershed you live in in Cuyahoga County. All of the cities here in Cuyahoga County drain out to Lake Erie. You can help the health of Lake Erie and our local creeks and streams by doing things in your yard like picking up dog waste, not fertilizing, or getting your soil tested to find out what you actually need on your soil, if anything at all, making sure your car is properly maintained, picking up litter, and other practices like installing a rain barrel. Oh, we know you've got some questions about rain barrels. Don't worry, we've got the answers. Okay, here goes all of your questions. The first question, will my rain barrel attract mosquitoes? The answer is no. This type of rain barrel is a closed water system and there is no standing water in which mosquitoes can breed. Other systems have an open top on them and those ones you do have to monitor to make sure you don't get mosquitoes breeding in your barrel. Second question, you absolutely can add a second or more barrels to your first one. What you wanna do is, is drill a hole on the side of each of your barrels at the bottom, put a hose barb in and connect those with part of the hose from the diverter that you've cut off, maybe about five or six inches or so, and make sure those barrels are elevated to the same height. Number three, can I paint my barrel? You absolutely can and we encourage it. You can have a beautiful piece of art in your yard. What we suggest you do is put some sandpaper over your barrel to rough it up, put some primer on, and then use a paint that will adhere to plastic and then put a clear coat over that. That way that the painting on your barrel is going to stay because it's gonna be out in the elements and we want it to last as long as it can. Next question, can I drink the water from my barrel? I wouldn't suggest it. Actually, I wouldn't do it at all. 
all of that water is coming from your roof. And if you think of what happens on your roof where birds are hanging out up there or there's debris that maybe have got, has gotten into the, um, into the downspouts. So I would not drink the water from your barrel. And I really wouldn't let pets do it either. It's strictly for watering your gardens and yard. Can I put one on my house or garage? That's gonna be up to the community that you live in. You always wanna check and make sure that there isn't an ordinance against rain barrels or where you should put your rain barrel or can put your rain barrel on your house or your garage. What about the winter? Well, it's cold here in Cleveland and you're not gonna to want to harvest water in the winter. There's really no reason to. So the diverter that you're going to get comes with a deactivation plug that you put onto the, onto the diverter and then you take your barrel off for the winter Make sure it's emptied out and store it until next spring. For building a rain barrel, you're gonna need some supplies. They're all listed here, and we're gonna go through them one by one throughout this video. Well, obviously you're gonna need a barrel. Uh, you can use any type of barrel. You just wanna be sure that it's food grade and that it's never had any sort of chemicals in it. We get our barrels from a company called Container Compliance here in Cleveland. Now you wanna grab your drill and then you need a 15, 16 inch drill bit or a one inch hole saw. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna use the one inch hole saw. Now you're gonna drill the hole for the spigot. Drill a hole about one or two inches from the bottom of the barrel. Now you're gonna need your needle nose pliers and take that piece of plastic out from the drill before it gets cool. And now grab your three quarter inch pipe tap and your three quarter inch male spigot and some Teflon tape. Put the pipe tap in the hole and turn it so you are threading the hole that you've already drilled. Use the wrench and put the pipe tap uh, down further into the barrel. Make sure you don't put it all the way in because that pipe tap will fall into the barrel and you'll have to shake it out since this is a closed system. So once you get up to about a little bit before the end of the threads, just back it out. Now you're gonna take the Teflon tape and wrap it around the part of the spigot that you'll be putting into the barrel. Make sure to wrap it in a clockwise motion. Now you wanna screw the spigot into the barrel, making sure it's as straight as possible. Once you get it flush with the barrel, that's when you wanna stop. Time to grab that drill again. Drill a hole on the side of the barrel about 90 degrees from where you put the spigot or on the top of the barrel. Don't forget to remove the plastic piece from the drill before it gets cold. Otherwise, it'll get stuck in the drill bit. Grab that pipe tap again. Use the pipe tap again to thread the hole that you just drilled into the barrel. Again, be sure not to go too far or the pipe tap will drop into the barrel. Good job. Screw the hose barb into the hole that you just drilled. You won't need any Teflon tape here because no water is going to be sitting at this part of the barrel. You may need to use a wrench as sometimes this can be a little bit tough to screw in. Now grab your diverter kit. In there you're going to find directions on how to cut your downspout to install your diverter. You'll also find the diverter, a hose, and a deactivation plug to use for the winter. Now put one end of the hose onto the hose barb. The other end of the hose is going to fit onto the diverter that you've put on your downspout. Again, don't worry, there's directions in your diverter kit on how to install that diverter. In the fall, when you're done harvesting water for the season, you take the hose and the barrel off of your downspout diverter. Use a deactivation plug to plug up your diverter and all the water will continue to go down the downspout. Make sure you store your barrel in a garage or a basement, or if you store it outside, make sure you flip it upside down 
just so all the water can drain out of it. Before you cut your downspout to attach your downspout diverter, you want to be sure to elevate your barrel. Concrete blocks work really well. The higher you elevate it, the more pressure you're going to get out of that barrel. You want to be sure it's on stable ground because once that barrel fills up, it's over 400 pounds and you're not going to be able to move it once it is filled up. Thanks for watching everyone. For more information on rain barrels, visit our website at cuyahogaswcd.org. Click on programs and then click on rain barrels. Happy rain harvesting!